This is part 24 of Angular Grad tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the difference between value and ng value directives in Angular. Along the way, we'll also discuss how to validate a select element with a custom option like please select, select department, etc. Notice we have our department select list right here and our first option select department is selected and if we take a look at the HTML here is that select department option and look at its value it is minus one and since we have this option selected by default when the page loads look at the corresponding property value in the model department value is minus one and angular is treating that value as a valid selection we know that's not a valid department and when we have this option selected we want angular validation system to fail the required validation. The easiest way to get this required validation working is by setting this default option value to null instead of minus one and when the page initially loads we want this option to be selected by default so let's also initialize the corresponding property with the value of null so here is our model object and the corresponding property is department let's initialize this property with the value of null so select department option is selected by default when the page initially loads notice now the department property value is null so if we touch the department field and leave that field without selecting a valid department we get the required validation error as soon as we select a valid department the validation error disappears now look what happens when I go back and select select department and leave the field we don't get the validation error anymore so let's understand what's going on here now if we take a look at this department property it looks like the value is null so the required validation should fail but if we take a closer look at that notice that null word is actually within double quotes so it's actually a string with those four letters null and it is not null now the obvious next question that comes to our mind is how did it work the first time? Let's reload this page to understand that. Notice now the department value is null. We don't have double quotes surrounding that word null. So it's treated as a null and because of that when we touch the field and leave it we get the required validation error. As soon as we select a valid department the validation error disappears and we see the selected department ID as a string against this department property. Now if we go back and select the first option, now we have that null within double quotes. So now it is treated as a string instead of null. So the obvious question that comes to our mind is how is it working properly on the initial page load? Well, that's because if you take a look at this department property within our model, we are initializing it with null. And this is what is used on the initial page load, so it's working as expected. But on our subsequent selection, it's actually using the value that we have against this value attribute. And this value is being treated as a string with these four letters, NULL. And now you might be wondering, if we use property binding instead of attribute binding by wrapping this value attribute in a pair of square brackets like that, will it work? Well, let's take a look. Notice on the initial page load, it is a proper null. So when we touch the field, leave it, we get the required validation. As soon as we select a valid department, it disappears. And when we go back and select select department, it's treated again as a string. So the required validation is broken. So to properly fix this, we will have to use ng value instead of value and remember v here has to be a capital letter notice on the initial page load the property value is null so the required validation should work the same way and when we select a valid department the validation error disappears now when we go back and select select department we still get our validation error back and if you look at the department property here notice it is still treated as a proper null value and not as a string. So the obvious question that comes to our mind at this point is what's the difference between value and ng value properties? Well, if your option value is a simple string, then use the value property. On the other hand, if the option value is null or an object, then use ng value property.
for this default option we want to treat this value as null and not as a string and hence we are using ng value instead of value now if you take a look at this option loop notice we are using value property instead of ng value that's because when we select a department we want that selected department id as a string so since we are using the value property notice when i select a valid department we get that selected department id value as a string now if you want the entire selected department object instead of this selected id department string then use ng value property instead of the value property and we want to bind that to the department object and keep in mind this department object is this loop variable right here so let's see what changes and then take a quick look notice now when we select a valid department we get the entire department object with its id and name property instead of just the department id string i hope that explains the difference between value and ng value while we are here let me also give you a quick tip if you don't want users to be able to select this first option select department we can use the disabled attribute like this so on this default option let's use the disabled attribute notice we have select department selected on the initial page load when I drop this list down look at the style we get you know the select department is kind of grayed out meaning will not be able to select that look at this as I move my cursor I can select any of these valid departments but I am not able to select select department now if I click outside of this field look at that we have that select department selected and because that's not a valid department selection we get the required validation as expected now when I select a valid department the validation error disappears now if I want to go back and select the first option I will not be able to do that because we are using disabled attribute so the important point to keep in mind is this built-in required validation will work on the select element only if your default option value is null if it is anything other than null then it's not going to work in a real world application most of the time we load the select list options from a database table we might also load this default option from a database table and when you're loading this default option from a database table your option value may not be null it could be minus one or select or something else depending on how you have designed your table if that is the case then this built-in required validation will not work the only way to make it work is by creating a custom validator we'll discuss creating a custom validator in our next video we don't want the entire department object so let's use value instead of ng value and let's bind just to the id property on the department object we also don't want our first option to be disabled so let's remove the disabled attribute and we want the select department to be selected on the initial page load as we have set its value to minus one let's also initialize its corresponding property to minus one we forgot to remove the square bracket so let's remove them as well notice now the required validation is broken it doesn't work anymore because the default option value is minus one we'll discuss how to fix this in our next video by creating a custom validator and here is the example that we just discussed thank you for listening and have a great day